When did you realize your friends were actually fake friends? When I was babysitting her kids things were going great. We would hang out all the time have movie nights and just talk and chill. But the second she no longer needed a babysitter was the second I got kicked to the curb. No explanation not even a text back. Some people will act like your best friend until they no longer need you. They're lost though. Whenever we were supposed to hang out something came up and that something was hanging out with other mutual friends. Yes. My best friend in high school used to do this to me all the time. On Wednesday, I'd ask if she wanted to see a movie Friday night. She'd always say maybe, if I can get out of doing whatever with my parents. Come Monday I'd hear her talking about how great the movie was. Apparently, last minute her parents said she didn't have to go and miraculously a group of people called right then and asked her to see the same movie. She'd always say I figured you made other plans when I confronted her about it. In reality, she'd just wait to see what the better option was and pick on Friday. God that pissed me off. When I was in school, all my friends and I did different A-levels. Despite us all having different lessons to each other, they would wait for each other to go to lunch together. But they would always always forget me. Like I'd come out and they wouldn't be there. So I'd have lunch by myself, and then they'd come back and tell me they thought I was with them. I was the only one they didn't wait for, I've only seen one of them since we left school, she had forgotten my name, so that sucked. When I traded in my truck for a smaller more eco-friendly vehicle, communication plummeted now that I can't haul furniture around, assist with moving as much, dispose of garbage, etc. When my phone got stolen and I lost their phone numbers, mine stayed the same, but we just never talked again. When my Apple account got compromised and I lost my backup when I changed phones I lost all of my numbers. I haven't gotten a text or call from any of my friends since. That was 5 years ago. Oh no. I think I might have fake relatives. When they stopped contacting me when I stopped drinking. I feel this. Used to have countless friends. Went out all the time. Lost control of myself and quit. Friends stopped calling. Now I'm a weird eccentric who hangs out in the woods in all my free time. Things are better this way. I have a couple friends who stuck around and the girl of my dreams. That's all I need. When you stop going to the bar you no longer exist to those who live that life. It messed with my head for a while but I get it now. I flew out to support a friend going through a messy divorce. While I was there, she left me in the apartment to meet up with her boyfriend that I didn't know about. He turned out to have just been released from prison for manslaughter. Once she told me that, I told her that I didn't want to spend time with him, especially considering the circumstances of my visit. The next night, I woke up in the middle of the night to find him in the living room. She said that she thought it wouldn't matter since I was asleep. The next day, she invited her soon-to-be ex-husband over without telling me and then asked me to meditate their conversation once he got there. That conversation turned ugly fast. And she ended up storming out. He broke down and asked if I thought it was salvageable. And I told him that she had already moved on. Maybe not the best idea on my part. But at that point, she had shown me how vile of a person she is. When I went through a divorce and was down to $700 bucks most difficult period and weeded out all those who friended me for my generosity because I was well settled. Started over and had like two true good friends. Two real friends is better than 100 fake friends. Hope you're doing well. I was invited to the bachelorette party for one of the friends in this group. While at the party, I figured out that I was the only person not invited to the wedding. I had been invited to the party because they needed another person to chip in for expenses. What kind of human scum does that? It's amazing what people will do to get what they want because they deserve a perfect wedding experience. Apparently I didn't realize I was on a different tier of friendship with my so-called friend. My friend was getting married and I didn't get an invite. Which was fine since her wedding was a destination wedding in a different country. I attended a sleepover party, which she hosted. There was about 9 girls there in total. They kept talking about the KK bachelorette party and then started showing photos of the crazy party. I realized I was the only one not invited. Made me feel kind of crummy. My friends from high school all unfollowed me when I graduated college. I'm the only one who no longer lives in our hometown. Consider that a badge of honor. Once high school ended, I heard about all the rumors they made up about me. After my divorce, we were couples friends not individually. 
my wife and I separated and she got the majority of our friends. Almost nobody checked in on me to see how I was doing. Then we decided to work it out and stay together and now there's a whole list of people's birthdays I don't have to remember. That's an inspiring sentence. Now there's a whole list of people's birthdays I don't have to remember. Thanks. This was also when I realized who were my friends and who weren't. We were supposed to go to a tour and we save our money and pulled them. Fake friends told me they had to cancel the plan because ticket prices got too high. Told me to wait a few days to get my money back. Real friends asked me why I bailed on them. And were worried that I had an emergency. Turns out my fake friends didn't want me to come and instead would use my money for their booze and told everyone else that I bailed out and took my money back so everyone else would give more for their booze allowance. That friendship ended and I also learned my fake friends were alcoholics and weren't strangers to effing over people to get what they want. Today one of them is alive. Their alcoholism ruined their lives and some even died from it. One friend stopped replying to my texts right after we graduated from college. Like the same week we graduated. So, I was pretty much just a study buddy that they kept close to keep me helping them. This is basically all of the friends I made at various points in college. As soon as we don't see each other 3x a week, they fade away. I get they are busy but I didn't realize making lasting friendships as an adult would be so difficult. It is so hard to make friends as an adult. I moved to a new city about a year and a half ago and still have zero friends. This one girl was is trying to be friends with me but only because she wants someone to emotionally dump on. Other than that, I've had a couple friend dates to meet people and they usually just stop texting back. I feel like most adults already have their friend group, and it is almost impossible to get into those. Same thing happened to me, was friends with so many people during college in the last 3 weeks was an unpaid work placement which we had to go back to the school to hand in our paperwork. Not one of them spoke to me or would even answer me if I said something to them. Became clear that I was only valuable to them when I was helping them. Class awards had me down as most willing to help classmates most willing to help classmates. This is literally a label which gets a lot of friends because it always attracts people. It can be a problem because you are always questioning every person you befriend. It is almost like you have to be extra careful because you are kind and helpful. Such is the world we are in now. The only positive of this is that you can quickly identify fake friends because they drift away without giving a ref while the real ones stay. This friend. I'll call her Mary. Had kids the same age as mine. We got together for play dates pretty often and our kids would sleep over at each other's houses for weekends. I liked Mary. We would often visit and talk while our kids were playing. One weekend, her kids had stayed at my house. The older one called her mom to see when she was coming to pick her up. I was in the room, and the kid put the phone on speaker for some reason. Mary told the kid what time she would be there and added, You had better be waiting outside. If I have to go in and spend the next hour talking to revert him, I'm going to be really pissed. We didn't spend much time together after that. I think this is especially shtai. Mom friends are hard enough to find. Then to realize that they didn't even want to hang with you. And because your kiddos are friends you don't necessarily want to blow that up by calling the fake mom friend out. I tried to have mom friends, but it failed three times. And that was enough for me. I still have one. Even though our kids are grown, I remember meeting her and just feeling so comfortable. No bullsh. A lot of kindness and compassion. She's the kind of friend that you can lose contact with for a while, then pick up again as if no time has gone past. Our four kids, to hers and to mine, have an apartment together. They're in college. It was something the kids put together on their own and they are doing really well. This was quite a few years ago. My ex and I were really friendly with another couple, did a ton of stuff together, then they moved, not far, and fairly shortly after my ex and I separated, they hung out with me for a few months but then stopped calling. A few years later, I ran into both of them at a race, an ultra marathon, and they both pretended like they didn't know me, that was actually a really painful moment, I just posted something similar. When I was married we were in a friend group with three other couples on our street. My ex cheated and we divorced. The group kept inviting both of us to the same events because they didn't want to pick sides. I moved out of the neighborhood and realized they were proximity friends. Not real friends. That hurt. A lot. I've actually come to accept that proximity friends are still a type of friend. 
A friend for life is a rare thing and it's okay that not every friend you ever make will last forever. Some friends will only be with you because they don't want to be alone. As soon as something better comes along you become less important. The group made plans to meet and hang out. I was getting ready in the salon. A couple of friends had to back out for some reason. The other friend then made excuses of his own. And I could tell. I tried cajoling him and offer ways for him to go but he basically decided to cancel the entire group meetup. It was my birthday. Same thing happened to me on my 21st birthday all my friends made up excuses why they couldn't come. Then the three friends that did met some guys and we went back to their house and awkwardly sat around. Happened again for my 25th birthday I had moved across the country and found new friends, but they all bailed at the last minute. I called my roommate at the time who came out when he got off work, and he called some of his friends who came out and I had the best night ever. Those guys are now my real friends, and I married that roommate. This is extremely heartwarming after reading this thread. Congrats, damn. Hope you aren't with those people anymore. I wouldn't say I have fake friends but I am definitely the periphery friend. The majority of the time if there isn't enough tickets or space in the car for everyone to go do something, I'm the one who gets cut out. It doesn't bother me much but I wish they would be more mindful when talking to me about things we have done. Remember when we went to see XXX? Wasn't that fun? Well, no because I wasn't invited. In those situations it usually gets awkward or they say hey, we would have invited you if we had the tickets space, etc. I also experienced this with the friend group I grew up with. There was no single or full event. Just got tired of being on the periphery and being an afterthought even though when we were actually together you'd swear we were all family. Finally decided to just cut it all out and move on after my absolute closest friend who I've known since I was 8 handed me a wedding invitation for a wedding that was planned for a year and now it was like 2 weeks away. He tells me hotel is almost fully booked so call soon if you plan on staying overnight. That was the most I've ever felt like a complete and total afterthought. Went to the wedding for the ceremony in one last show of effort for the friendship but at this point I felt so uncomfortable and alienated I knew they just weren't my people anymore and I had to get on without them. Even though when we were actually together you'd swear we were all family. Exactly how it is in my group too. In the moment, things feel awesome but at the end of the day you realize that you'll always be a periphery friend which is a shtai feeling. What did you do after you cut ties with them? My best friend since 5th grade invited me to his wedding as a guest. I expected to be a groomsman, since we basically stayed the night at each other's houses every weekend all through high school and I set him up with his wife. We were still close for long distance friends too after moving to college. I'd come visit and spend the weekend with him and some mutual friends a few times a year. We did fantasy football and texted pretty frequently at the wedding. The bride and groom each had about 8 people in their parties. The groom had his brother and 7 friends. I didn't make the top 7. I knew pretty much everyone on the bride's side but only knew half of the guys up there with the groom. That opened my eyes a bit. I took a step back and analyzed our friendship after that. Realized I always texted first or made plans. Always visited him but he never visited me, etc. He basically put in no effort. So I stopped texting for a while. As a test. And I haven't heard from him since. It's been about 11 years. Preach. Absolute preach. It's a sh feeling. I was recently excluded from a party where my friends got on a bus to go out of town. The friend who had the party said that they didn't invite me because there was not enough space on the bus. I'd rather he told me the truth as to why I wasn't invited in the first place. There were about 70 people on the bus. I mean at that point. If you're not making the top 70, I think you can say they are not your friends, fake or otherwise. I was always on that spectrum as well. I've had 4 core groups of friends over the years. First was in junior high and high school and I would frequently learn about things they had done or parties they'd had that I wasn't invited to for whatever reason. 2 years after graduation I just wasn't invited to hang out anymore. College I had a new core group. Or really too. But during the summer I was left out when they would all get together and do activities we all did during the school year. I never understood why I was left out. Then after graduating I drifted away. Got another group of friends and same story. I don't blame any of them though. I'm obviously the common denominator and I have my thoughts on what's wrong with me that people don't think to have me around. Or perhaps don't want me around. But I'm still trying to really figure it out. 
Maybe if I fix it I can finally have some long term friends. But I'm getting older, have kids, and not really hopeful that's going to happen. The worst is when people try to justify it by saying we didn't not invite you. Everyone was welcome to come along. You deliberately asked everyone except me. When I realized literally just being in the same room as that person made me miserable. It's because the person was extremely self-conscious. To the point that they would overcompensate by putting others down every little chance they had. To make themselves feel above. I kept wondering why they would keep throwing me under the bus for no reason. Like we had been friends for years. Why would they treat me like this? It took me years to figure out exactly how bad of a friend they were, no matter how hard they pretend not to be. It took me an entire year of ghosting to stop being friends with that person. Because they loved putting me down so much they wouldn't stop calling me, texting me, trying to contact me for a year with no responses because they could not understand how someone could possibly want to stop hanging out with them because they are so perfect. When my longtime friend called me and said hey can you hang out? No one else can. Finding out they have an inner circle group chat but I'm the only one not in it. Something similar happened to me. We were all set to go enjoy music at a local establishment. I talked to multiple people from the group. Confirming meeting time. I got there and no one else was there. Eventually they all showed up together. Found out they had been out all day together shopping drinking and I was the only one not clued into that part. I had been looking forward to the night but ended up feeling lower than I had ever felt. Knowing me, I would have slinked away like a ghost as soon as I realized and probably never talked to them again. Wouldn't be the first time. Same. I found out that they had two groups one with me and one without. They never used the one with me though. This is the worst feeling. When I was in my mid 20s, I worked a job where four of us had the same position. The four of us did everything together. Then I made a mistake, and I apologized for it, but one of them just could not seem to forgive me, and aggressively isolated me from the group. I remember how shit I was to discover that they had a whole group chat that I wasn't included in, and had done all these social things without me. I've always been lucky to have a lot of friends, and I figured out after a while that these people weren't going to be it for me. So I stepped away from those friendships and invested in my actual friendships. It still makes me mad looking back, though, what was the mistake? This happened to me as well. Hurt like a bee when I found out but best thing you can do is cut him off. Shortly realized after quitting coke that a majority of my friends only kept me around so they could feel better about their own coke habits. I was heavily addicted and setting myself down a path I never once thought I could or would take. Stopped for my own benefit and health and was treated like a selfish piece of sh for doing so. The next month since you'd not one of them checked in to see how I was doing. But instead my high school best friend started sleeping with my ex high school girlfriend. I was with her for 5 years and actually thought I was going to marry her at one point. Who dumped me for doing coke and is now an honorary member of the group I was cast out of. Replaced with the person who partially fueled my substance abuse. Who dumped me for substance abuse. By the group that didn't like me stopping my substance abuse. So they could all abuse substances together. It's now been over a year since I quit. And honestly couldn't be happier. Got rid of a coke addiction and about 1000 pounds of dead weight. But it was an eye opener to say the least. I was at a party. Really depressed after a bad breakup and got drunk. My abusive ex showed up. Caught me somewhere alone and hid me. I begged several friends for help since I was too drunk to drive home alone and they ignored me. My ex best friend was there, completely sober and refused to drive home with me because she didn't believe he would do that. There's no Uber or anything in my country BTW. The whole thing escalated. One guy I didn't know ended up finding me alone in a field crying and throwing up. Brought me back to the house. Build a bed out of blankets for me and sat guard all night to make sure my ex wouldn't do anything again. What happened after that? Did you find any new friends? Did you get your ex to leave you alone? When I realized I was the one always calling. Then I stopped and friends disappeared. I only have one exception to this rule as I know my friend is a reactive texter and he's got a lot on his mind at all times. PTSD, anxiety, depression and such. I check in on him regularly and I don't mind him being a wall for a while. He's come through for me and he's a good man. The rest can f off. I am that kind of person. And you are a good friend. I feel you on this one. 
when you try to open up and try to share a genuine conversation about something going on in your life and all they can do it crack jokes and try to get you to go out drinking with them, made me realize how surface level many friendships really are. Then you have the opposite of that three guys I've known since I was a freshman in high school, been friends for over 15 years, have stayed in touch through all of us getting married, having kids, and moving to completely separate areas or the country, yet whenever we're within an hour of each other we always make a point to get breakfast and catch up. This usually turns into 3 plus hour conversations. This may only happen once or twice a year, but I consider those guys my best friends. That's real friendship and I'm fortunate to have them. When they ghosted me after 17 years of close friendship, I still have no idea what I did wrong. And for extra salt in the wound, it was right after I spent a week eating instant noodles because I donated every cent I had to one of them for her cancer treatment GoFundMe. Hurt more than any relationship breakup. Is there a GoRefundMe option? They would invite each other to places in front of me and not include me in the slightest. When I ditched them they didn't know how to take it, lol. Like I suspect for a lot of people, getting divorced was a real eye opener. I started with a core group of close friends who had all met in our late teens early 20s and one of them introduced me to the woman who I would ultimately marry. Well into our 40s they were what I considered to be my family but when the divorce happened things spiraled. My best friend stuck with me, but his wife was the one who orchestrated things in our group and she was best friends with my ex. I was expecting the two of them to insulate for a while and I knew it was painful for my ex to be around me, so it was no surprise when I stopped getting invitations to cookouts etc. But then I noticed that the other members of the group were also avoiding ignoring me. I'd see on Facebook that one of them came into my town to go to a concert for a band that they knew I liked and hadn't so much as texted. Birthdays rolled around and nobody would call. When my parents both died within a few months of each other and not a one of them reached out I knew where I stood. My best friend needs to get credit though. Alone from all of them he made a consistent effort to stay in touch and see me regularly. He was there when my parents died and through everything else even though his wife clearly disapproved. I think finally after this nonsense had been going on for several years he told her how ridiculous it all seemed and that entire friend group tried to reconcile. I made it clear right from the start that there was no guarantee that I'd ever find space for them in my life again. This is all very apropos right now because they are having their first big post-covid party in a couple weeks and I'm invited. People are coming in from all over the country and the only one I give a sh about seeing is my buddy. I stopped smoking weed and they stopped coming round. This is a lesson that every smoker learns after a while. Some friends are only friends that you smoke with. A good rule of thumb is to do things together where you're not smoking. If that works then you are probably real friends and not just together for smoking. 